So although it might not look or feel like it, it is the Christmas season, and I figured today I'd take a walk in the woods and look for some materials to make a wreath. The first thing I'm gonna grab is a grapevine. What I'm looking for is one that's kind of thin and lithe enough that I can bend it, and of course it has to be alive so that it's actually um, not dried out and it won't crack as soon as I try to bend it. You do want to make sure that uh, you avoid poison ivy, which has these sort of like hairy tendrils coming off of them. So I found a pretty decent uh, thin piece of grapevine. It's like a little less than arm's length. And now the key is just kind of to coax it to bend. And to sort of help with that, I'm going to use a tree. And what this tree allows me to do is I can bend the stick and sort of hold it in place. So the tree not only gives me leverage to push against, uh, so I can conform the vine into a shape I want, once I've got it in the sort of hoop shape that I want, I can use the tree to keep it here. It'll sort of start adjusting to being in this wreath shape. If you don't have any good trees to bend your grapevine around, you can also take sticks and pound them into the ground so that you can form a sort of frame that'll hold your vine in place. So the next step is to find some sort of cordage. Uh, this can prove a little bit challenging in the winter because in the summertime or when things are growing, you can find a lot of plants that are really pliable, green, and have lots of flexible fibers, like stinging nettle, for example. In the winter time, it's a little harder to find cordage, but there are some options. Uh, for example, you can use dogbane, trees that have flexible bark, like uh, the pawpaw tree, the tulip poplar, the American basswood. Those will all still work really well. And then this right here is the milkweed. And sometimes in the winter, you can still get some fibers from this and turn it into cord. So when you're harvesting milkweed fibers in the winter, you kind of want to crush the stem because the inner layer will still be this kind of like pithy, hard layer. But on the outside, there's these fibers that are pretty flexible. And so you kind of want to separate the hard inner part from that outer fibrous layer. So we've got this fibrous layer here, and what we're gonna do next is sorta of twist it until it forms a loop here. And then we're gonna take both of these two ends of the fiber, and we're gonna twist them both in the same direction. And you kinda wanna start by manually twisting it, but then you can kinda like roll it on your thigh to, to get them both twisted. <clears throat> and when both strands are twisted in the same direction, the cord will naturally wrap around itself like that. Now the key to this is that you want to make sure both sides of your rope are an even thickness and if one side gets too thin you can add in some more fibers just so the rope itself is even and doesn't have any weak points. Now you're gonna need to check your milkweed plants and make sure you're grabbing one that's still got fibers that are fairly intact and not rotted away this late in the season. If you can, dogbane is another good substitute for that. Milkweed makes really good, strong cord. It's actually really durable, like I, it's hard to pull apart and it's really not breaking, I'm using all my strength. And what the cord is for is to tie the grapevine to itself so that you can secure it in that loop shape. And then after that, we're also gonna use the cord to tie our material to the frame of our wreath. So for simplicity's sake, so that I don't have to cut down every single milkweed in existence, we're gonna use some store-bought natural jute. So there's a lot of uh, native plants and also plants you can find sitting around in neighborhoods that you can use. This one is an evergreen plant called the cedar. Obviously it's got a very Christmassy feel. So we're gonna use some of that. So obviously some other very Christmassy plants are pine and spruce. I'm gonna take a few of those as well. The only problem with pine and spruce especially is that they're kind of spinier and they kind of hurt your hand when you're holding them. <laughs> So we've got our hoop for the wreath, and then we've got some cedar, some spruce, and some pine. And of course, these aren't the only things you can use. Um, obviously, holly and mistletoe are things you can add to it. And also, the Christmas fern is something that actually grows natively here, and it's called the Christmas fern because it's evergreen, and people often use it in wreaths and Christmas decorations like this. But for now, I'm just gonna start with this. So I'm gonna take a bundle of the three plants and just sort of tie them on. And you want to sort of just use variety so that it looks like they're all mixed together and is aesthetically pleasing.
So, that's all you need to know to make a wreath of your own. And of course, again, you can use whatever plants you want. The nice thing about this is, it is completely biodegradable, so once the season's over and you want to take it down, you can either keep it or you can just toss it somewhere and, and it'll just eventually degrade and put nutrients back into the forest. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Check out our full adventures where we go backpacking and consider subscribing on Patreon to support our channel. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. If you sign up on Patreon before our next public episode, you can receive special digital holiday rewards. And if you give the gift of Patreon by purchasing a subscription or referring someone to our page, you can get a physical holiday greeting card.